thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> forgive me if I'm not sucking on lifesavers. I've got a cough, so I'm, I walked over to the drugstore to uh, stoke up. Um, all right, so I'm going to talk today about um, some basic biology that relates to the biology of aging, uh, ties together some of the themes we talked about this morning relating to telomere biology. Uh, we have, this is a very short talk, so I can't touch on every issue. But then I want to bridge it into what I think might be some novel ways of tying all this biology together in some very concrete ways that we could potentially make a major advance in, um, in intervening the biology of aging. So let's try to accomplish all that here. Now first let me summarize a couple of salient points which may be obvious to many of, <clears throat> of you. First, uh, Aging really is a huge demographic trend. You know, the, the analogies have been given of this being like a, the tsunami that hit uh, Indonesia in recent years. The age wave really is like that. Uh, we noticed it, you know, when it was out at the ocean, the boats went up and down, but the tragedy occurred was when it hit the shore. And when the baby boomers hit uh, old age, you can see the clinics filling up with the age-related degenerative diseases. It's going to bust the bank. The second point is uh, fundamental insights into the biology of aging that provided targets that you could go after with drugs or other therapeutic strategies could provide the foundation for uh, very large business opportunities based on the, the enormous demand already present and gr rapidly growing. The last point is a bit of a trivial point, but one that I observed. Actual interventions in aging will probably generate very little com competition in the business sector. I can't explain that. Maybe it's a large-scale denial of problems of aging or a large-scale denial that we could ever substantively intervene in aging. I don't know, but uh, that's been my observation. In the <coughs> excuse me, 1800s, a scientist named August Weissmann, a German scientist, started out an essay, one of the first essays on the biology of aging by quoting Johannes Mueller. Organic, organic bodies are perishable, you and me, while life maintains the appearance in, of immortality in the constant succession of similar individuals, but the individuals themselves are passing away. See, this is just the same as Ben Casey. Uh, this is a daughter, her mother, her mother's mother's mother, and her mother, you know, on and on and on. And of course, we don't have pictures, but this goes back Forever. A simple way of saying this, and it's not a play with words, is you and I are made of a from a lineage of cells that has proliferated in an uninterrupted fashion since the beginning of life on Earth. We are made of cells that have no dead ancestors. Third way of saying it is, the cells in our body will experience death for the first time in the history of life on Earth with you and me. Now the reason I'm saying all that is I think it's profound but also it turns the story upside down. Many gerontologists looking at the biology of aging say you know how is it that we live so long? I mean you know all this cosmic rays and everything else but the reality is the human species is an immortal species and in a sense human life is immortal it's the individual the somatic cell lineages that's mortal. The germline has potential at least immortality and so that is the basis of August Weissman's early brilliant research, by the way. And he laid out the simple idea that life began as single-celled organisms like this one here that was immortal. It proliferated, uh, as Dr. Rose mentioned earlier, through simple cell division. There was no programmed aging and death. <coughs> but sometime early on, these organisms stuck together and then made a fundamental special specialization, some of the cells made a collection of cells that he called the soma, which maybe was a protective mechanism or whatever. The original cells continued this merry-go-round ride through generations and became the germline. The somatic cell lineages over millennia evolved into highly specialized cells, muscle, neurons, blood, you and me. So what he pointed out was that immortality is probably still maintained in the germline, which is the original property of life itself. Aging and death are a unique property of somatic cell differentiation. 
And so, simply put, here is a uh, Volvox, one of these primitive organisms, spelling out the germline. The somatic cells will die. And as we tend to summarize it, you know, starting with a single cell, uh, these cells divide, making all the differentiated cells of the human body, but the germline is the basis of that immortality of the species. Okay, so the simple question is, cutting to the chase, what can we learn about the immortality of the germline? Fundamental insights into the biology of aging and used to intervene in the biology of aging. So I'm going to walk you through uh, a few of those. <coughs> By the way, here is August Weissman's, look at this, uh, 1891, a quote from his essay on this. Death uh, takes place because a worn out tissue cannot forever renew itself. <clears throat> and because the capacity for increase by means of cell division, and we should insert in the soma, is not everlasting, but finite. He made the prediction that somatic cells age, and that's why the individual ages in, 18, in the 1800s. It's really remarkable. Well, in the 1960s, Leonard Hayflick fought the dogma of his time <coughs> and resurrected, I'm sorry, resurrected this idea <coughs> by showing that indeed human cells of many different kinds, when cultured in vitro, have this finite replicative capacity and this is what they look like. They like people, they get big and they enlarge around the waist and they stop uh, reproducing. So this is the way we show it as the Hayflick curve. So here, uh, our senescent cells. Now early on, for some of us who took this as a model system for aging, we noticed that some cells can immortalize, uh, as in cancer. So if a normal cell can transform through genetic mutations into an Im immortal cell, we thought that that told us something fundamental about the complexities of aging. Uh, Dr. Hayfleck, a brilliant scientist, had written papers saying the aging of somatic cells is incredibly complex. We'll never understand it. There's at least 300 different changes that we've only identified, probably many more. The fact that cells could immortalize relatively easily in the process of cancer made us think maybe that dogma's wrong. What triggered Geron was <coughs> me stumbling on a paper in 1986 or so where uh, Howard Cook here published, this is right from his paper, he showed that telomeres, the ends of the DNA strands, were constant in the germline, like in sperm of many different ages, <clears throat> but in cells like blood cells, as a function of human aging, not in vitro. People of different ages, he so showed progressive shortening of telomeres. This was completely consistent with a theory previously proposed by a Russian scientist named Dolovnikov, who maybe should have won the Nobel Prize. And so we gambled on this, uh, based on a lot of other data too, of course, that this was the clock of cellular aging, these telomeres that uh, Dr. Andrews introduced us to this morning. And so indeed, <coughs> over the years, <clears throat> the data came in, the telomeres shorten in vitro as cells age in vitro in the Hayflick phenomenon, but also in blood cells in vivo, and that they're maintained in sperm, for instance, may be a little more complex in the case of egg cells. Well, now, does this have anything to do with human aging? We can't, in such a short talk, get into all the details, but I think that the evidence that telomeres are fundamental in biology of aging is very convincing. Back when I was, you know, a Geron shareholder and I was out an officer in the company and, you know, promoting the company, I'd never say that. I'd say I thought it was part of aging. I didn't know how much. But the quickly, I'm not here to talk all about telomeres, but Werner syndrome, the gene binds TRF2, a telomere binding protein, has broken telomeres, very convincing data. Lamin A directly inter interfaces with telomeres and results in telomere breakage. Um, if you introduce the Werner syndrome gene in a mouse and then knock out telomerase to make telomeres like humans, suddenly mice age like humans. They get type 2 diabetes, they get cataracts, things the mice no normally get. If you overexpress telomerase, boost tumor suppression so you don't get cancer, you extend the lifespan of mice. I can go on and on and on. There's a very convincing amount of data that this is fundamental in the biology of aging. Well, how could we then use this, these insights to improve aging? <coughs> One way uh, that Dr. Andrews was talking about 
is to activate telomerase. Uh, telomerase is this green hand here at the end of the DNA strands. It uses an RNA template to manufacture these telomeric repeats. Can we turn it on? <coughs> introduce it to the body through gene therapy, as Dr. Fossil's talked about, or through drugs. One thing we do know, it works in vitro. So here are senescent cells, oops, I'm sorry. Here are senescent cells at the same doubling cells that express the catalytic component of telomerase and like the Energizer bunny, they go and go and go. That's a certainty, well documented at this point. <clears throat> 